These videos are so terrifying. I would be shocked if you aren't still thinking of them tonight. Number 5. Lalo Escalante is a Mexican paranormal investigator. Relatively new to YouTube, Escalante started his channel in October 2019. At the beginning of December 2020, Lalo and his team investigated an abandoned house in Culiacan, Mexico. Right at the beginning of this video, a couple of orbs can be spotted as the camera is showing the exterior. While it could be dismissed as dust particles, other such specks can be seen all around. The orbs in question stand out and do not resemble the other dust specks seen. Furthermore, there's no distinguishing features you would see on an insect such as wings. From this common and tame example of paranormal phenomenon, the video escalates rather quickly. Escalante is joined on this investigation by friends David Apino and Luis Fernando. Right from the get-go, Apino appears to be in a state of discomfort. He frequently clutches at his stomach and coughs, causing concern amongst the others. <laughs> Despite him claiming to be alright, the others seem unconvinced and soon Apino is hardly able to walk. His companions help him to a place where he can have a seat and he stumbles as he is being led. Once they get him seated, they attempt to compose themselves when Escalante hears a noise startling him. <laughs> After calling out Ola, the cameraman spots a figure in a white shirt calmly walking from right to left in the background. The team quickly goes to investigate and check to see if there may be another person in the building. Entering a courtyard, they find nobody there and no sign of where the figure has gone. As they attempt to determine what they saw, their focus is broken by a strange high pitch from above them. <laughs> It is difficult to fully analyze what the noise might be as Escalante is speaking when it happens, but on closer inspection, it sounds either to be a woman giving out a quick scream sound or the squeaking of a door or other inanimate object against either the ground or wall. Seconds later, they hear a similar noise and this time clearly sounds like a whimper. <laughs> As they decide to re-enter the building, they hear another sound, this time like a woman either crying or laughing. <laughs> By this point, they feel they are not alone and quickly duck back inside. Throughout this time, Apino continues to show signs of distress, coughing and rubbing his stomach and chest. Clearly, something is affecting him. On their way inside, they discover some evidence the place is used by vagrants, trash all over and discarded clothing. This does lead to the possibility of whatever they saw and heard could be an actual person rather than paranormal, but this doesn't make the ordeal any less scary. People can be unpredictable, and it's possible whoever may be residing there could want to protect something they have stored there. The trio soon ascends to the top floor, where they spot yet another terrifying presence. Below them, in the courtyard, they spotted the figure and heard the noises. They again see something staring at them. It then quickly ducks behind a wall, out of sight. They all rush down to investigate, but whatever was there has vanished. As they return to the courtyard, a loud crash is heard next to them. And even worse, a Pino appears to black out. His face has gone completely red and he is out cold. Concerned for their friend's well being, the team abandons their investigation and rushes Apino back to their car. At this point, the video ends, but captions after state Apino regained consciousness and recovered quickly. Clearly, something had affected him in the place. They never found what was spying on them, but it is safe to say it didn't want them there and definitely succeeded in sending them hightailing it back to safety. 
Number 4. Dark Ghost is a Russian paranormal investigator sharing his story on YouTube since May 2017. He has traveled to some of the most terrifying locations in Russia to document evidence of ghosts and other bizarre phenomena. By popular request, he returned to a home he had previously investigated and had gotten a lot of response from whatever was living there. According to legend, someone or multiple people are buried underneath. Immediately upon entering, there is still furniture in the house largely untouched, giving the impression the house was vacated rather quickly. The bed even remains done. It's not long after his arrival, he receives his first sign he is not alone. Loud knocks from the living room behind him. He ventures to the kitchen to investigate, where he is greeted by a door swinging open on its own. The room the door leads to is full of junk and what appears to be a table and bed frame, but nobody is inside. Curiously, there is a trap door to the attic, which he decides to later investigate. After setting up his equipment, he ventures back to the attic door to have a look inside. Furthermore, it's doubtful anyone is hiding up there as it's too cramped, and the only way to open the trap door is from below. Nothing happens for quite some time until he is nearing the end of an experiment using a camera flash rapidly firing. After a final flash, a loud sliding noise is heard from under the bed, causing him to retreat. When he gathers the courage to return, he discovers evidence that a box under the bed was moved. As seen by the disturbance in the dust on the ground, moments after this discovery, he is startled by the same noise under the second bed to his left. He briefly retreats outside to compose himself and eventually returns to the living room. Once again, nothing happens for some time until he goes to retrieve another piece of equipment. Так, это мне нужно сейчас будет ИГФ. As he ventures back to the kitchen, he is startled when the accordion on a side table suddenly goes off. He watches in shock as it continues to squeeze in and out, the haunting sound emanating from it. This almost proves too much and he rushes into the kitchen, closing the door behind him. However, whatever has been with him this entire time goes after him, and the door once again quickly opens, almost as if it has been kicked open. He kicks the door back to see if there's a response, and he gets one in the form of a door behind him rattling. Clearly terrified, he retreats outside. After some time, he explains he stayed away for about an hour before he returned inside. When he returns, he sets up a spirit box session, asking questions as a camera continuously takes photos of him. Despite asking questions for several minutes, it takes some time before he receives his first response. Yeah. Almost immediately after, he hears what appears to be shuffling or possibly whispering from beneath the bed next to him. <laughs> after asking if whatever is there can show itself, the wardrobe behind him opens on its own. Without him noticing at first, after the spirit box replied, not enough strength, followed by, to pass away. When he asks what it meant, it replies, for you. Well, it seems to make sense the reply would be not enough strength in responding to its manifesting. Following up with to pass away and for you seems ominous and terrifying. 
Could the spirit be referring to its desire to take their lives? When he asks what it means, it replies, and you will see us. By now, Dark Ghost can hide the fear on his face, even from behind his face mask. His mannerisms are now that of anxiety. After several moments of silence, he asks if it is still there, only to receive an answer of ear-piercing electrical screams. Who's this? Who is this? At this point, he decides to end the investigation out of fear for his safety. Clearly, whatever remains there is unwelcoming and wants to be left alone. Number 3. Epoch Paranormal is the YouTube channel of paranormal investigator Joseph Sturgill. A veteran of the YouTube paranormal community, he started uploading in late 2009. During his investigation of West Virginia Penitentiary, Sturgill managed to capture a terrifying piece of evidence. In the short video, Sturgill explains he had a constant feeling something was behind him, even though nothing was. It was during a joint investigation, but he says it wasn't any of the other investigators he felt. <laughs> During the walkthrough and prior to the incident, Sturgill documents some disturbing graffiti on the wall in one of the cells. While the messages were clearly made long after the prison was shut down, and rather recent judging by the good condition, the words still send shivers up one spine. Sweet lips lie wife, mine three feet under the kicker reads one, accompanied by three stick figures. Two are laying on the ground labeled Josh and Alex, while the the third position in the middle is hanging from the ceiling, labeled Dave. Below these is written, I'll be back, clearly referencing the hauntings occurring in the building. While it is likely the names written on there are the actual perpetrators of the graffiti and is likely a simple sick joke, it does enhance the chilling atmosphere of the location. Another creepy message in a different cell reads, doing time is a blessing unless you're sick as a dog and do some confessing. With a rather impressive skull drawing above it, it's enough to make you wonder what drives people to write such messages. Writings on the wall aside, the main feature of the video happens just after the three minute mark. Sturgill turns around to face the way he just came and spots what appears to be a tall figure standing in the doorway. It looked like there was a person there. He even comments about it and it looks as if whatever was there moves to the left of the door frame out of sight. While it is hard to see, the apparition has distinguishable features, including visible arms and legs, while its head is obscured by the top of the frame. Sturgill briefly focuses back on the cell he is in front of before turning the camera back towards the end of the hall. When he pans back, the figure is gone, and the doorway looks unlike what it did before. Nothing looks obscured, and his light goes right through this time. Could this be what was following him the entire time? In any haunted location, it is difficult to determine the type of ghost one could be dealing with. Is it friendly, malevolent, neutral, scared? In a prison, the motivations of those left behind can be even more difficult. Imagine all the different personalities who resided there when it was open. Thieves, life takers, petty crooks, innocent as well as guilty. Thankfully for Sturgill, it appears on this occasion whatever was following him was nothing more than curious as to who is visiting the prison. Hopefully all future guests only experience the same entity and not something more vicious. Number 2. Alan Sullivan House is a relic from Cleveland's historical background. Built in 1887, it was the home of Richard N. Allen, the man who invented the paper car wheel, credited with improving passenger travel in the latter half of the 1800s. It was located in what was known as Millionaire Row, an area where the city's elite resided. This included John D. Rockefeller, the famous American entrepreneur and founder of Standard Oil. The home passed from various members of the city's upper class until 1923. 
when it was sold for alternate use. From there, it was passed from organization to organization until it was abandoned in the 1990s. Bad luck struck there early, when only three years after its completion, Alan passed away suddenly in the home, leaving his wife Susan as the owner for eight years until she moved away. The home was then sold to Jeremiah Sullivan, who too would pass away in the home in 1923. Urbex Hill is an urban explorer joining YouTube in September 2013. In January 2021, he decided to explore the Alan Sullivan house due to its history and frankly cool architecture style. The first thing of note when Hill enters the house is how bare it is, aside from a couple of chairs in the front entrance and the typical paint chips and dust on the floor. The house is completely bare. This is likely due to either the previous occupants moving all their possessions out when it was abandoned, or due to the home's impending demolishing. One room on the second floor, however, is completely filled with furniture and other junk. So much so, Hill cannot even enter. Most of the video runs normally without incident. However, near the end is when this strange occurrence begins. After exploring the basement for a while, Hill is checking out a 2003 newspaper left on his shelf when, from behind, a bottle falls on his side without explanation. He decides to wait for a bit to see if there was something that could have made the bottle fall, but all of the bottles on the table are now perfectly still. He even walks right up to the table and his footsteps make no disturbances to what is on it. While he is inspecting the bottles, he hears what sounds like footsteps coming from in front of him. and an area blocked off by what appears to be storage for event tables. Unfortunately, the area is so dusty, it is impossible to tell if there are any orbs flying around, since they are obscured by the dust particles flying into the camera relentlessly. What can be determined is the sounds he is hearing are not made by him, as his footsteps are silent as he walks around the room. Figures the activity starts when he is in the basement. It also happens to be the most crowded part in the house. Aside from the aforementioned second floor room, the most compelling part of the video is when a chair, seen earlier facing to the right, suddenly bounces off what appears to be a wine rack to the left. Hill was not near the chair when it moved, and it is unlikely his steps disturbed. Yet since he had walked closer to it earlier without any issues, when Hill shows the same clip but enhanced, it almost appears the chair is pushed against the rack and then lifted up before dropping again, not in the sense it is bounced off the rack, but as if it is actually picked up by hand. This is the last encounter Hill has during his visit, and he leaves the house soon after. What may be residing there is likely to be left unknown, with that house's impending deconstruction inching closer and closer. Sir. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next 5 seconds? Because I upload 4 new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. Number 1. Strange people can appear at any time in any place. A YouTuber named Will posted a series of Snapchat stories dealing with one such person who surprised a trio of friends in October 2015. According to the camera operator, a random woman knocked on the door, walked right in when he answered, and locked herself in the bathroom. The confused group were unsure what to do at first, but eventually called the police. The responding officer spent some time attempting to unlock the door from the outside, all the while receiving no response from the individual. By the time they managed to get in, the woman is passed out on the bathroom floor. Soon, the fire department and paramedics arrive to assess the woman. The entire ordeal, while definitely bizarre, ends up being one the group and the first responders won't forget anytime soon. The woman was clearly not in the right state of mind and confused, needing medical attention. Thankfully, her face is not shown in the clips, as it is easy to imagine how embarrassing this would be to see when she recovered. 
On another note, for the trio in the house, it is lucky this home invader wasn't there to cause any harm to them. They were lucky to not have been visited by more vicious home invaders who are there to take things or possibly people. But I sincerely hope the woman received the care she needed and continues to have anonymity. This top 10 list has videos that are scary enough to make you drop your phone, so be careful.